Recent data shows that homelessness is rising among Latino communities in parts of Southern California. What more can local, state, and federal leaders do to help people struggling with housing? Congresswoman Sanchez, let's start with you. So addressing the issue of homelessness and expanding access to affordable housing is one of my personal top priorities, and it's an issue that severely impacts Latinos in the L.A. region. Uh, new reports show that almost 45 percent of L.A. County's unhoused population is Latino. Um, so there are several things that we've been working on um, to try to help address this issue. Um, number one is fighting for federal funds. Um, so I was able to work with my, one of my local cities to help build a homeless center and transitional housing in that city. I've been working on two uh, requests for funding to help uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, build 18 new homes to um, be sold with affordable mortgages to low-income families, and also um, $2 million in workforce development programs um, that would specifically target two groups, adults who are experiencing homelessness and also at-risk youth from disadvantaged communities who are either experiencing or at risk of experiencing homelessness. But the, the lack of affordable housing is really um, an issue that needs to be worked on at every level of government. So not just the federal government, but our local governments and our state governments. Um, and that's why I have been working to expand the low income housing tax credit here at the federal level, but also trying to work with my um, governmental partners at every level to try to address some of the issues that make it hard for affordable housing to be built. And one of the biggest issues is the zoning ordinances that cities have because there is um, a vast preference for single family um, dwelling zoning in each city. And we are at the point where we need multifamily housing uh, because land is the biggest cost when it comes to building housing. Uh, and if cities are have a preference for single family houses, you're just not gonna have the availability of housing stock that we need in order to fake, make housing available. From the federal side, uh, we can develop more resources, just like uh, Linda has, has mentioned. Uh, we can do that in, in the appropriations bills. We can support affordable housing. We can look at uh, tax credits uh, for construction and building affordable housing. Those are the types of, of ways we can be involved. I'd also note that we uh, put $350 billion uh, into state and local governments uh, as a part of the uh, American Rescue Plan. And so, uh, you know, ensuring that we they have the resources to get through the pandemic, but also to make strategic investments is important. Uh, the state created uh, Operation Home Key, um, which is uh, an important step in a collaboration among regions uh, in the community where I'm from in Redlands. They did a conversion of, a, of an older motel uh, that will create uh, nearly 100 new affordable transitional units. Those type of collaborations, while we set aside the nimbyism, um, is something that we can all continue to improve on and invest in. I do believe that when we talk about homelessness, we should always take a comprehensive public health approach uh, to the uh, homeless population. In other words, the first rule is to get them housing. And while you secure housing for them and a place to, to live under a roof, eat whether temporarily or long term, you also have to add the issue of health care and a education or some kind of vocational training so that the ultimate goal is for individuals to be able to be self-functioning in society and to help pay for their rent. And that is where we need to partner with local nonprofits and make sure we have increasing grant funding for organizations like the Coachella Valley uh, Volunteers in Medicine, where I was a founding board member and I also helped initiate their street medicine where i've gone with other volunteers into the streets under bridges by the railroads in the desert to take care of our homeless population uh, every week <clears throat> and and to connect them with other resources we have the coachella valley rescue mission martha's village and kitchen that also aids in in work uh, force training and education uh, and we need more mental health services for those that suffer from uh, the illness of addiction 
to help them get off of the uh, the drugs and uh, into a healthier lifestyle for them and their whole family. So all of this is very important. I've introduced a bill called uh, Healthcare for the for Homeless Veterans, which would expand the outreach that the VA can do to really get our veterans into the system uh, so that they can get the care that they need. Congresswoman Sanchez, you worked as a former lawyer before being elected to the House. What insights did you gain from that experience that has helped you serve your constituents in the 38th District? Sure. Well, um, I come from parents who are immigrants and they were strictly working class. My father was an industrial mechanic and my um, mom would supplement that income by cleaning houses, but she later went back to school and became an elementary school teacher. And what I really saw was that they they struggled and they worked really hard and they sacrificed a lot in order to give my brothers and sisters and I more opportunities than they had. Um, so when I decided to practice law, I um, went into labor and employment law to really fight for workers who oftentimes are taken advantage of or who experience it, you know discrimination in the workplace. Um, and that really informs a lot of the work that I do here in Congress. So as the uh, co-chair of the Congressional Labor Caucus, I fight for working families every day. Um, so whether that's standing up for workers who, uh, you know, are walking on a picket line, and a recent example in my district was um, mostly Latina workers at John Denaire Bakery uh, were out on strike because of poor working conditions and long hours and um, a lack of ability to negotiate for fair wages. And uh, they ultimately were able to um, sit down and, and work out an agreement with their employer. I'm a proud member of IBW as well. I really believe in uh, union uh, labor. They provide a great path for good paying careers that don't require a college degree. Um, and with the investments that we are about to make in our infrastructure through the uh, infrastructure bill that we passed last November, uh, we are going to see a, a real need for skilled labor um, in the building and construction trade. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff uh, coming down the pipeline for California. Um, I was really excited to have Labor Secretary Walsh out to the district to meet uh, with apprentices at the uh, Carpenters Apprenticeship, uh, which provides uh, career ladders, uh, uh, especially for folks that are, you know, non-traditional. So people perhaps who've had brushes with the criminal justice system, uh, you know, but want to start a new life and want to start a new career, and we're giving them that opportunity. Still ahead, how the Congressional Hispanic Caucus is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. We'll be right back after this break.